Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me again. Today is Monday and I have much to do. First, we need to harvest herbs from the garden and turn them into what I hope will be a year's supply of pesto. And since we have dinner guests coming tomorrow night, I need to deep clean the dining room in this ancient house. And I need to fix something for tonight's dinner. Let me finish my coffee and then we can get cracking in the garden. Pesto is my favorite way to preserve herbs from the garden. Today, I am harvesting parsley, basil, and chives. This is the parsley that you and I planted back in April. Although the plants bolted after our freak heat wave in May, the leaves are still perfect for pesto. These basil leaves are at their height of perfume. I will use them to make the traditional Italian-style pesto. Just now, I am pulling out the finished French filet beans. With the beans out of the way, I can see that the bell peppers behind are turning from green to red. I will harvest and preserve the peppers in a future video. Chive pesto is so delicious, it is addicting. I like to cut the verdant stems almost to the ground. After cutting, the plant will immediately begin to grow again and produce another massive harvest before frost. I'm going to get all of these herbs cleaned up and then I'm going to get myself cleaned up before we start processing the herbs. And by the way, this basil smells amazing. All right, here is the mountain of chives that we harvested. So now I'm going to cut them into manageable sized pieces. And then I'm going to wash them really well. I'm going to have to do this in several batches. After washing the chives in cold water, I roll them up in a bath towel to dry them. Well, that worked out very well. I'm going to make the pesto in my very small food processor, which means I will have to do the pesto in batches. Okay, so I have some chives in here. Then I'm going to add some of the raw sliced almonds that you and I bought at Tierra Farm the other day. About a handful. A handful of grated Parmesan cheese. And a clove of garlic, or the equivalent in garlic paste. Let's give this a spin. I will put a link to this chive pesto recipe in the description below. Then I'm going to add olive oil through the feed tube. You do not have to measure the olive oil. You just want to use enough oil to achieve the desired consistency. Taste. Wonderful. This is so delicious. If you've never tried chai pesto, you must. I think I'm going to serve some of this as an appetizer at our dinner party tomorrow. 
I'm going to continue making this chai pesto, and when we're finished, we'll come back. All right, that was about six batches of chai pesto, and look at it. It's really beautiful, and it is super delicious. I tend to make pesto extra thick when I'm going to freeze it, because I know I can always thin it out. Let me clean up my mess, and then we can get started on the parsley pesto. All right, on to the parsley pesto. I had forgotten to put my apron on earlier. So I washed my parsley outside, and I still have some stems here, but that's fine. The stems are loaded with flavor. And I'm going to cram as many parsley leaves into this little food processor as possible. Now, there are no nuts in my recipe for parsley pesto, but I am going to add garlic. I ran out of my garlic paste while I was making the chive pesto, so I have fresh cloves of garlic here. I'm adding two cloves of garlic. You can add more or less as you like. Then I want to add some mint leaves. This mint came from the berry farm because I'm not growing mint this year. The mint actually mellows out the pepperiness of the parsley. So it's a parsley mint pesto, and boy, it's delicious. The amount of mint you add is entirely up to you. Parmesan cheese. and salt as needed. But Parmesan cheese is rather salty, so I'm not going to add any unless I think it needs it. And then, of course, good old extra virgin olive oil. Let's give this a taste. Oh, this is wonderful. I do want to add a little salt. Taste again with a clean spoon. That's perfect. I need a bowl. I'm going to continue making the parsley pesto until I run out of parsley. This did not make a whole lot of parsley pesto, but that's fine. I have a lot more parsley in the garden. Now I'm going to tackle the basil pesto. And for this, I'm going to use basil, pine nuts, garlic, Parmesan cheese, and olive oil. It's a really simple recipe. A taste. Exquisite. Now, all three of these pestos would be delicious on not just pasta, but chicken, white fish, stirred into mashed potatoes, put on toasted baguettes. Pesto is so versatile. Deliciously versatile. Okay, I will continue my basil pesto making. This is a good start to my basil preservation, and I have a lot more basil still in the garden. I'm going to refresh my workstation, and then we can start packing the pestos into jars. I had covered and refrigerated each of my pestos. 
So now I'm ready to put them into jars. So I think we will start with a chive pesto. These are half pint jars. This is nice and thick, just the way I wanted it to be. Now, if you're freezing pesto in jars, make sure to leave a half inch space of headroom because the pesto will expand a bit. And if you leave a half inch of headroom, the jar will not crack in the freezer. Freezing is so much easier than canning. Although I may try my hand at canning some garden produce this year. Well, I have already filled my nine jars with chai pesto and I still have some chai pesto left. I'm going to have to buy more jars because I still have the basil pesto and the parsley pesto to do. And I'm going to put one of these jars in the refrigerator tonight because I will probably serve it as an appetizer with some chips when our dinner guests come tomorrow. Speaking of dinner guests, I'm going to have to clean the dining room tomorrow. Uh, and again, I have to buy more jars, so we will finish this project in the morning. Have a wonderful night with sweet dreams. Good morning, it's Tuesday and I managed to find more jars this morning. So I'm going to continue packing my herb pestos. So this was the remaining chive pesto and I already have nine jars that you saw me do yesterday. They are in the freezer. So now onto this glorious parsley and mint pesto. I need to label all of the jars. Let me clean up my workstation and then I will pull out the chai pesto so we can look at the entire project. So here are my 17 jars of pesto from the garden. This is definitely a year's supply of pesto for Mr. Fox and me. Now I'm going to put these into the freezer and then we need to get cracking in the dining room. Our contractor has been working on the ceiling there. The room is covered with dust. Well, you will see. Anyway, I need to do a deep clean. Mr. Fox informed me that I had the wrong date for the dinner party. The party is next week, not tonight. As I mentioned earlier, our contractor has recently made repairs to the dining room ceiling. This has resulted in a layer of dust on every surface in the room. And I must clean the room quite literally from top to bottom. For the chair rails and baseboards, I am using a microfiber cloth and an all-purpose cleaner. This room was super clean before the contractor started working on the ceiling. Now look. To clean tabletops, I am using a microfiber cloth that is slightly dampened with water.
This is a black Egyptian marble fireplace surround. After I clean the sideboard with a microfiber cloth, I then give it a light coating of mineral oil. Mineral oil gives antique wood a lovely sheen. Vinegar and water do a fine job for the glass on this early 19th century mirror. I am using the same mineral oil trick for the dining table and all of its chairs. To finish, I am vacuuming and mopping the floors. Well, I think this room is about as good as it can be right now. This table is certainly begging for flowers. Let's go arrange a few. You know me. When I went shopping for the canning jars this morning, I also bought some inexpensive flowers. So I'm going to arrange these in this old soup terrine. But first, I need some greenery from the garden. Come with me. For greenery, I am using boxwood, ferns, and hosta leaves. It's the same old story being told inside my head. I'm too shy to straighten up my bones and be a man. No home is complete without a revolving cake stand. I'm going to bring this into the dining room. I actually spent several hours cleaning the dining room and now I'm starving. For dinner, I'm going to fix linguine, what I will cook to an al dente state, and then I'm going to top the linguine with some of the parsley pesto that we made earlier, and I will garnish it with mint leaves and some Parmesan cheese.
Here's the pasta, al dente. On goes some of this gorgeous parsley pesto. Toss. This smells amazing. I'm going to use the whole jar. Chiffonade of mint. A serving for me. And a serving for you. Parmesan cheese. Because we can never have too much Parmesan cheese, right? For such a simple dinner, this is incredibly delicious. Well, we certainly accomplished a lot these past two days, and I just want to thank you for hanging out with me. I hope you will take advantage of the herbs from your own garden or from the farmer's market or from the supermarket and make a big batch of pesto that you can store in your freezer. Again, it's super convenient to have, and homemade pesto is so much less expensive than store-bought pesto. If you've ever bought pesto from the supermarket, you know what I'm talking about. Again, thank you so much for spending time with me today, and I will see you next week. I think we're going to make tea sandwiches. I'll see you then. Take good care of yourself. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.